Okay, we got the man you pay here today with uh, who we got? Who are you? Faith. Okay. And uh, how you feeling today? I feel fine. That's good. So uh, I appreciate you taking this time out while you at work to uh, answer this question for me. Uh, so what is your experience as a black woman in America so far? I'm well. My experiences, some have been good, some have been bad in America. And excuse me, where are you from? Memphis, Tennessee. Born and raised? Born and raised. Okay, what part? Uh, when you say part, what do you mean? Like, the part you gravitate mostly to where you spent like the first 10, 20 years of your life at? Downtown. Okay. Downtown Memphis. Okay. And you say your experience has been? Some good, some bad as a black woman in America. Okay. So overall, can you give me like a percentage? Uh, a percentage of being a black woman in America, I would say. Your experience is like good, some good, some bad. A percentage right. Um, Sixty percent bad, forty percent good. Okay. Any experience you care to share, good, no bad, just whatever you feel like giving them. You know, Black History Month and everything. Um, growing up as a child here in Memphis, I, I experienced racism. Uh, I used to go to the Malco Theater, which is now the Orpheum Theater, mm -hmm. and we had to sit at the top for black people and the white people sit at the bottom. Mm. And I experienced that. I experienced also... Um, Black people drinking only from uh, fountains that's marked black only, as well as restrooms. And I was here when Lowenstein's store was here, and we could only sit in a small part of Lowenstein's store. And those are some of the bad experiences. Mm. So do you feel as much has changed since then in the present day? Well... There has been some small changes. I wouldn't say any really big changes that I can see. Um, things are coming along slowly for black people as they always do. So we can basically say little to no change. Only change is we can come in now and sit there because they want our money now. Well, that's true too. One of the changes that our voices are louder is black people. Yes. We speak out more often and um, about things that were shushed under the cover, under the table, whatever. We're, we're speaking out openly about it now. Mm -hmm. uh, young people that are of color have a more louder voice than uh, senior people that was here in the 60s and the 70s. They are now protesting in their own way as young people do. So that's a big change. Yeah. So uh, anything you want to share about the good experiences? You know, like where your blackness took over. Like, you know, like, okay, I did this because I'm a black woman, but it was positive, you know. Yeah. I don't, I'm not sure. If I can speak on experiences like that, I can say truly that anybody that I meet as a black woman, uh, I can I can read them pretty good to see if there is any goodness or any hatred toward me for my color as a, as a black woman. Mm -hmm. uh, racism is still subtle in the world, and I experience subtleties of racism today. So, and what was that? Like the little microaggression that it was. Um, um, let me think on it. I experienced some too. I was just kicked out of a store from doing interviews because you know. Uh -huh. I can't. I can't recall any of them right now at the tip of my tongue. But through the years, you know, there have been instances. No, I'm talking about the one you experienced today. Oh, I haven't experienced any today. Okay. Not today. Yeah. But uh, anything you want to let them know before we get out of here? 
You know, we got a lot of viewers all over the world. Uh, I just want to say be strong and sure of yourself if you're any color, not just as black. But as a black person, you need to be aware of where you are at all times and what's going on around you at all times. It seems to be our color is a magnet for anything that that uh, happens to us in the world. Our color perceives it first. Mm -hmm. That's it. All right. Thank you, Miss Faith. All right.